video we're going to look at the uh, gas exchange in both the bony and cartilaginous fish. Um, we're going to start off by looking at the gill structure um, and then we're going to look at uh, the exact gas exchange mechanism that occurs in both uh, these types of fish. Um, one gas exchange mechanism is called the countercurrent mechanism uh, that occurs in the bony fish and uh, in the cartilaginous fish that is the parallel flow. So uh, we'll start off by uh, looking at the uh, gill structure. Okay so I've got various diagrams now on screen. Um, if uh, we label this one here number one okay that's just a basic diagram of, uh, of a fish uh, showing here um, the actual position of the gills within um, the fish uh, what's happened is that um, there's normally a flap covering these gills that flap is called the opercular flap uh, that's been removed and uh, the gills are directly underneath uh, that flap you can see that um, generally fish will have um, four gills okay and they'll have gills on each side of their uh, body okay uh, so they should have about eight in total uh, gills okay uh, so what we need to look at is the the detailed structure of um, one gill and that's shown now in diagram number two uh, this is a real gill uh, that's been removed from a fish and uh, if I take you through some of the features here, um, these structures here, uh, the sort of long pointy structures, um, they're really nothing to do with gas exchange at all. Uh, they're called the gill rakers. Okay, you can see that uh, they don't look red in colour, so they don't have a blood supply uh, as such to them. So um, they won't make good gas exchange surfaces without a blood supply. Um, those gill rakers are attached to this um, structure here, uh, which is called the gill arch. Okay, and the other side of that gill arch now will actually be the structures we're interested in. Okay, these red structures here um, are called the gill filaments. Okay, uh, so I want to uh, just show you a, a basic diagram of a gill. Uh, so this is diagram number three here. Uh, you can see I've got the gill rakers in. Um, we've got the gill arch there and the other side of the gill arch you've got these uh, long uh, projections coming out of the gill arch. Uh, these are called uh, the gill filaments. Okay and uh, on the surface of the gill filaments are these structures called the gill lamellae okay now I've drawn them as sort of d-shaped structures um, sort of semicircular structures and um, these gill lamellae are actually the gas exchange surface of the fish okay so it's a, it's across these structures that um, uh, gases will be exchanged okay so that's uh, that's a basic diagram there of, of one gill um, if I just scroll back up now, we want to look at the, the last diagram here, uh, number four. Um, this is um, an electron microscope image of um, two gill filaments, actually. So that's one gill filament there. This is another one. And the gill lamellae are these structures that are projecting out of the surface of the gill uh, filament. So... Um, these these gill lamellae they don't lie flat on the gill filament as my diagram shows in in number three uh, they actually project out at about 90 degrees so they stick up um, and it's uh, it's these that um, as I've said provide the the gas exchange surface uh, of the fish so that's the uh, the basic structure of the gill um, I want to show you another kind of um, uh, way of representing the gills and in this next diagram uh, we can start to look at um, the, the blood flow uh, through the gill because it's the flow of blood and indeed the flow of water that are important for the uh, gas exchange mechanism in, uh, in the fish. So in this diagram then 
I've drawn out um, a gill, uh, kind of looking at it from above really. Um, so there's lots of arrows and lots of lines on here that we need to discuss, but let me just go through uh, some of the labelings. Um, we've got the gill filament here, okay, they're the, the finger-like projections uh, sticking out. Okay, so they're the gill filaments. Um, what I haven't labelled here um, actually is the gill lamellae. Now, the gill lamellae is represented by those uh, blue and red lines that go across the gill filament. Okay, so every blue and red line there represents a gill lamellae um, that go across the gill filament. Okay. Um, so coming out of the gill filament then, we go down now to the gill arch. Okay, and the gill arch uh, really has blood vessels in it which supply the gill filaments with blood. So we've got uh, the afferent vessel here. Um, that vessel will um, take deoxygenated blood into the gill uh, filament. Okay, and the efferent vessel down here, this is where blood high in oxygen returns um, from the gill filaments back to the gill arch. Okay, um, so basically then every, every blue line on this diagram represents uh, deoxygenated blood going in to the gill filament and going across the gill lamellae as well. And every red line represents uh, blood high in oxygen um, coming out of the gill lamellae, coming out of the gill filament and back to the uh, efferent uh, vessel. Um, so that's the, the blood flow through the gill and also um, the various uh, blood vessels that are present in the gill. The other thing that I've shown on this diagram is actually the direction in which water will flow over the gills because obviously fish uh, live in water and the uh, oxygen they need uh, to survive is contained within uh, the water. So what I've shown, and this is uh, starting really to look at the countercurrent mechanism of gas exchange uh, which occurs in the bony fish, you can see that um, the blood flow uh, that occurs through the gill lamellae occurs in one direction and the water will flow in the opposite direction over those gill filaments. Okay, And that's why it's called this counter current flow because the blood will flow in one direction and the water will flow in the opposite direction. So that's what those blue uh, water lines are representing on this diagram. So that's the uh, the structure of the, the gills. Um, I think before we move on to look at the countercurrent mechanism, just a quick recap really um, about uh, gas exchange surfaces. Uh, you should know um, the features of all gas exchange surfaces and what makes them good. Um, to carry out gas exchange. If I quickly run through these as a recap from uh, video number one. Uh, they've got to have a large surface area. They have to be permeable uh, to gases. They've got to have a good blood supply. Uh, they have to be thin. Okay, They have to have a short diffusion uh, pathway. And um, they also have to be moist as well. Okay, So the, um, the gill lamellae um, will actually have all of those features because it's the gill lamellae, as I've said, that um, is the gas exchange surface. Okay, um, we'll move on now to look at the gas exchange in the bony fish, uh, which occurs by the countercurrent uh, mechanism. So, um, I've got two uh, diagrams here that I need to take you through. Uh, to explain this countercurrent uh, mechanism in bony fish. Uh, we're going to start off by looking at uh, diagram number one here, uh, which is just uh, a, a way which I think uh, explains and shows uh, visually how this countercurrent um, mechanism works. Okay, uh, Diagram number two 
is kind of a graphical version of this countercurrent um, mechanism. Now, this this diagram number two is something that you may have to draw in an exam. Um, so it, it's something we'll we'll look at now in a moment. But number uh, number one, uh, what's going on here is at the top, um, I'm showing the direction of uh, water flow. It's going from um, left to right. Okay, down the bottom, the red arrow shows the direction of blood flow, which is going in the opposite direction from right to left. Uh, hence the term counter current. All right, the the blood and the water flow in opposite directions. Um, and really what um, the rest of the diagram is showing is uh, the, the length of one gill lamelli. All right, so if you see that uh, blue bar down the bottom, the whole of this diagram um, is, is across the length of one gill lamelli. Okay, and that's quite important to, um, to appreciate. So what's happening, um, I'm using uh, numbers from one to 10, and those numbers represent um, the concentration of oxygen. Okay, so if we look at the water um, concentrations uh, first, or the oxygen concentrations in the water, uh, you can see on the far left there, it, we've got a 10. So that means really the highest possible oxygen level in the water. Uh, so water is coming into the gill at this region here and the water will flow over the gill lamelli, over the whole length of it. Okay, as the water is flowing uh, across the gill lamelli, you can see that there is a gradual reduction in the concentration of oxygen in the water. Okay, so it goes from 10 at its highest. When the water reaches the other side of the gill lamelli, the oxygen level in the water has reduced to two. Okay, so obviously oxygen is leaving the water. And uh, that oxygen is actually diffusing into the blood, which is flowing in the opposite direction across the gill lamelli. Okay, so every arrow, every green arrow, sorry, represents the diffusion of oxygen into the blood. Okay. So as you can see then, if we look at the blood flow, um, we need to start off here at the right hand side. We have a concentration of one in uh, the blood and that will gradually increase as the blood flows over or across the gill lamelli right up to um, a point where the value is nine. So, um, obviously then, the, the oxygen that was in the water is diffusing into the blood of the fish and that diffusion is occurring over the whole length of the gill. You get continuous diffusion across the whole gill lamelli. And that's something quite important to remember actually. It's worth making a note of this. That in the counter current mechanism, you have constant diffusion of oxygen from the water into the blood. And that diffusion occurs over the whole gill lamelli. So you're making use of the full surface area of the gill lamelli in order to obtain oxygen from the water. Okay, so that, that's quite an important feature of this counter current uh, mechanism. Um, the other feature is um, the actual diffusion gradient that is being uh, created. You can see that if we start here on the far right, we got a concentration of two in the water and a concentration of one in the blood. Now that represents a diffusion gradient, but it's very shallow because there's not much difference between two and one. Okay. If you go over to the next uh, set of values, we've got four in the water and three uh, in the blood. Again, it's, it's a very shallow diffusion gradient, but nonetheless, it is a diffusion gradient and it will allow oxygen diffuse uh, to diffuse from the water into the blood. Okay, 
And as I've said, that will continue now over the whole Gil Lamelli. Okay. This is what makes the countercurrent um, very, very efficient. And the the standard value is that um, the uh, as a percentage, there's about 85 uh, percent of the oxygen in the water will diffuse into the blood of the fish. So that's quite an efficient um, gas exchange mechanism. Okay. Um, I'm going to go through diagram number two, uh, and once I've done that, I am going to write just one or two bullet points about um, the way in which this mechanism is so efficient for gas exchange, because it's very often asked in an exam, so it's worth um, actually getting those points down accurately. Okay, number two then, um, this is a graphical version of diagram one. And um, again, this has come up quite a bit where you have to either label uh, the lines on this graph. Sometimes they've asked you to label um, the x-axis. Okay, the x-axis is always the length uh, of the gill lamelli. Okay, as it is in my diagram one over here. The y-axis is always percentage of oxygen. Okay, and that's the percentage of oxygen in the water and the blood. Okay, so with regard to the lines then, uh, with the water flow, uh, the water is in blue, uh, the water here starts at 100%, which uh, equates to my 10 in my diagram 1, and as the water flows over the gill lamelli, the concentration of um, oxygen in the water decreases, okay, and the second line on the graph is the blood flow and the blood will flow in the opposite direction and uh, as it flows across the gill lamelli it gradually increases uh, in oxygen concentration and it goes up to about 85 percent okay uh, so that's a typical way of showing um, how the countercurrent mecha mechanism works um, via a graph uh, representation uh, there are other ways of actually drawing this, but this is the one I've seen the most uh, being used. Okay, um, that's really the countercurrent mechanism in a nutshell. So I'll just type out these important bullet points now, uh, which I'd advise you to write down. So there's the, um, the, the two important bullet points about why um, the countercurrent mechanism is so efficient. Uh, number one, diffusion occurs over the whole gill lamelli. Number two, a diffusion gradient is maintained over the whole gill lamelli because the blood and the water flow in opposite uh, directions. Okay. Right. Um, if we move on now, lastly, to the uh, cartilaginous fish. Uh, where they use a less efficient mechanism for gas exchange, which is called the parallel flow. Okay. Um, again, I'm using uh, similar diagrams to what I've used um, for the countercurrent. Uh, number one, then, uh, we'll start with and look at the uh, diffusion gradients and so on. And number two is the, the graphical version uh, of the parallel flow. So, um, number one then, what you'll notice, I think, quite quite obviously, is um, if you look at the, the water flow and the blood flow, they are, of course, in the, in the same direction. So they're both moving, in this case, from um, left to right. And uh, we, we do get diffusion of oxygen from the blood, uh, sorry, from the water into the blood, represented by the green arrows. But the diffusion gradient uh, is very different. Okay, so let's start off here at the left, left-hand side, where we have uh, the highest water level in, sorry, the highest oxygen level in the water at 10. And if we look at the blood, the oxygen level there is 2. Now, straight away, you can see that we have a very steep diffusion gradient to start with. And that's quite typical of this uh, parallel flow. So you have a steep diffusion gradient and oxygen will diffuse from the water into the blood. 
that steep diffusion gradient is kind of maintained as you move slightly further along the gill lamellae. Uh, you go from eight to three. And then six to four, you can see that the diffusion gradient is, is beginning to shallow somewhat. So we've now gone from six to four. So that's not such a steep diffusion gradient. Eventually, a little bit further along the gill lamellae, we come to a point where the diffusion gradient has uh, become equal. So it's represented as a five in the water and a five in the blood. This is a very typical feature of parallel flow. You get um, an equilibrium reached with regard to the uh, diffusion gradient. And that occurs halfway across the gill lamellae. And that's quite important to remember. This here represents about halfway across the gill lamellae. From this point on, there is no net diffusion of oxygen from the water into the blood. Okay, uh, That occurs because there is no diffusion gradient. So there, there is actually no net diffusion occurring. Okay, this is why the uh, parallel flow mechanism is so inefficient because it's only using half of the surface area of the gill lamellae for gas exchange to occur. The other half, no gas exchange happens. Okay, so the typical value is uh, the blood will become about 50% saturated with oxygen via this parallel flow mechanism. Okay. If we look at uh, the graph then, um, diagram number two, we can clearly see that um, right at the very start of the gill lamellae, there's a very steep diffusion gradient between the water and the blood. So up here, uh, we're looking at about 100% for the for the water. And down here, we're looking at about 2% uh, oxygen in the blood. And as the blood and the water flow across the gill lamellae in the same direction, you are getting gas exchange occurring, like that. But eventually, about halfway across the gill lamellae, you get this condition where no further diffusion will occur. And uh, this flat line here represents um, about 50% saturation of the uh, fish's blood. Okay, so that, um, that is the parallel flow mechanism which happens in cartilaginous fish um, like sharks. Okay, that really is um, gas exchange um, in the fish completed. Um, we'll just end this video now with looking at some typical uh, Welsh joint questions. Okay, this first question then, um, it's quite an old question, but uh, they, they have done something similar to this uh, more recently. Uh, but this, this, is a, this is a good one. Uh, you can see really you've got the, uh, the two types of graph that I've mentioned in this video. Graph A um, has to be the um, uh, countercurrent flow. Okay. Uh, B has got to be the parallel flow uh, because the um, the oxygen in the blood and the water sort of come to an equilibrium here. Okay. Uh, notice the labelling of the uh, x-axis look distance along the gill plate. Now, little word on terminology here. Another name for the gill lamellae is the gill plate. Okay. I don't tend to use gill plate, uh, but gill lamellae or gill uh, gill plate is fine. Um, in an exam. Uh, again, uh, the y-axis is the uh, amount of oxygen. In this case, they've got arbitrary units, but normally it's about a percent uh, unit on the y. 
Okay, so in the question then it says, in some fish water is forced over the gills in the opposite direction to the flow of blood in the gill plates. That's the counter current flow. In others, water and blood flow in the same direction, parallel flow. The graphs below show the relative amounts of oxygen in water and blood as the water moves across the gill plates uh, for the different types of flow. Okay, so... Um, Let's scroll down a little bit. Uh, the first thing it's asking you is complete the key above to indicate which line shows blood and which shows water. Uh, well, um, the uh, best way to, to figure this one out really is to look at graph B, to be honest. Um, in, in both types of um, mechanism, the level of um, oxygen in uh, the water is going to fall okay so you can see there that the the solid line uh, must be the water because that the, the oxygen level is actually declining or reducing there that means the dotted line must be the blood because the oxygen level is increasing there okay okay so there's the answers uh part two which graph shows counter current flow uh that's going to be a uh, graph a as i've already explained there okay we're going on to part uh, three now of the question uh, which is on the right hand side here um it's asking you to use the graphs to put values in arbitrary units into the following table uh, so the first one here, it's saying now, what is the maximum difference in the amount of oxygen between the blood and the water for graph A and graph B? Okay, what this is really um, uh, looking at here is to do with just the this region of the graph here uh, for, for A. Now you can see that the, the difference in oxygen level uh, is the same all the way along here okay because the lines um, are, are parallel to each other so um, this this emphasizes what I was saying earlier about this diffusion gradient um, it's uh, it's sort of constant really across the uh, gill uh, lamellae or gill plate uh, so the maximum difference really uh, well the uh, first line there is at number two the dotted line is at number one, so the difference there is going to be one. Okay, two minus one is one. Um, the maximum difference now uh, with graph B, uh, if you look here, the, the water is at nine and the blood is at one. Okay, so the maximum difference there is going to be eight, nine minus one. And again, that emphasizes what I was saying earlier about there being a massive uh, diffusion gradient right at the start of this uh, parallel flow okay um, the next bit now um, the distance along the gill plate over which exchange is possible so if we go to graph a uh, this is obviously the counter current and I said earlier that across the whole gill lamellae um, gas exchange will actually occur so the length or the distance along the gill plate in this case is seven so that would be the answer there seven okay um, with the parallel flow you can see that um, there comes a point as I said earlier where no further diffusion occurs and that normally represents um, somewhere between about halfway um, across uh, the gill plate. So in this case, we're looking at around about four approximately uh, there. Okay, so the answer would be four. Um, lastly then, the maximum amount of oxygen in the blood. Okay, well, again, we've got to... Um, read off the uh, the scales now in terms of the blood so the dotted line is the blood if we look at graph a if we look at the end of the gill plate okay because that's where the 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 blood will then eventually leave the gill you can see if we go across that there is about eight um arbitrary units of oxygen in the blood there 
and if we look at the parallel flow uh, you can see that um, that would be five okay because that's the maximum limit uh, that you can get there for the parallel flow so the answer there is five so I hope uh, at the moment you're following this and you hopefully can see how um, the theory I've taken you through relates now to this uh, this exam question okay Part E then use the information in the table to state which type of flow is more efficient um, they would allow either a graph letter here so you could have put A uh, or better still uh, you could have put the counter current uh, as the answer okay so just scribbled an answer in there okay A uh, or uh, counter current you could have put next now give one reason for your choice a um, couple of options you could put here um, you could have put that with with a the counter current the whole gill plate or gill lamelli is used for gas exchange okay because gas exchange occurs across the whole gill uh, plate or you could have put uh, a diffusion gradient is maintained across the whole gill plate or gill lamelli and that relates now to those two important bullet points I wrote down earlier to summarise why um, counter current was so efficient. Right, I hope you can understand that writing. Um, if I just read it out for you, I've just said that diffusion occurs over the whole gill plate. Okay. Um, okay, that's the uh, completion of uh, the first question. Um, we'll do a couple more and hopefully you'll get a flavour now of how to answer these questions. So this next, uh, sorry, this next question is um, uh, a bit more simple now. Um, it says, uh, use labelled arrows to complete the following diagram to show the relationship between flow of water and flow of blood in the gills of the fish. Um, so they've got here the gill filament, okay, and they're using the term gill plate again. Uh, that, of course, is also known as the gill lamelli. Um, so all you need to do now is put arrows on here to represent the flow of blood and the flow of water. So I would put an arrow that way on the gill plates so that shows the direction of blood flow and in the opposite direction then I'll put arrows showing water flow okay uh, you do need to label those arrows okay so make sure you uh, put water there um, for and also uh, the red there arrows representing uh, blood okay uh, so that should then get you two marks uh, next what term is used to describe this relationship uh, it's quite simply counter current flow I won't bother writing that in uh, next why does this increase the efficiency of the system again similar answer to what we said in the previous question um, diffusion occurs across the whole gill plate or the diffusion gradient is maintained across the whole gill plate. Uh, so that was quite a, a, a simple uh, section to this question there for four marks. This next question now starts off with um, looking at some structural features of gills and you have to list uh, three features which makes uh, the gills uh, efficient at uh, gas exchange. Simple easy marks now uh, mentioned them earlier uh, they're thin okay they have a large uh, surface area uh, they're permeable uh, they're moist okay uh, any of those would uh, get you the uh, three marks um, next then part B diagram A illustrates counter current flow in a cod okay um, under that then you have uh, in shark gills there is parallel flow supplying oxygen on diagram B draw a graph to show oxygen uptake in the shark assume that the flow rates are the same in both cases uh, okay so I'll try my best uh, here to draw these in uh, you should have a straight line really at 50% and then a line going down from 100 
that would be the water a line going up from about two ish uh, up there and that shows now a graph that we did earlier showing the parallel flow okay um, you should also label your line so make sure you know that that is water okay that would be the blood flow okay um, what is represented by the label X on the horizontal axis? Okay, should know that one, mentioned it earlier. Uh, it's the distance or the length along the gill plate or the gill lamellae. And lastly then, um, explain the advantages to the fish with flow A compared with a fish with flow B. Uh, the main advantage now is uh, with flow A you get a higher percentage of oxygen in the blood so that would get you one mark a higher percentage of oxygen in the blood you then need to explain how that occurs and you can say that um, oxygen diffuses into the blood across the whole gill plate you could also say that uh, you have a constant uh, diffusion gradient across the whole gill plate as well and that will get you uh, the two marks for this section okay that's the end of um, another question we're going to do one more so lastly then um, we've got another question here showing you the uh, structure really of a gill with the gill plate and the gill filaments um, you're told that it's from a bony fish so you should know now this is to do with counter current okay uh, it's fully labeled but you're asked in part one draw an arrow on a capillary to show the direction of blood flow in the gill plate uh, because you know it's a bony fish you're given the direction of water which is going from um, right to left therefore an arrow on the capillary must be going in the other direction okay that is your counter current now okay so that's an easy one mark um, next now using the letter H to indicate on the diagram an area where there is the highest concentration of oxygen in the blood of the gill plate uh, use the letter L to indicate where there is the lowest concentration of oxygen in the water passing over the gill plate Okay, so um, got to be careful here now that you accurately place these letters. Uh, so let's go for the H first then. We're looking where there, where there is the highest concentration of oxygen in the blood of the gill plate. Well, um, you, you've got to remember now the, the arrows for the capillary are going from uh, left to right. Um, and the water is going from um, the opposite direction, which is right to left. So basically... Um, as the blood capillary moves across the gill plate, it's going to pick up oxygen. So the highest oxygen uh, level is going to be here, sort of on the right-hand side of the, um, the gill plate, because um, that's now picked up the most oxygen. Um, the next one then, using the letter L, where the lowest concentration of oxygen in water passing over the gill plate. So uh, the lowest concentration is obviously now the other side of the gill plate because all the, all the oxygen has left the water and has entered the blood. Um, so there's your L on the left hand side and your H on the right. Lastly then, name this type of flow and explain how it improves the efficiency of oxygen uptake. Okay, the flow is the counter current flow and the, the explanation for that is what we've been saying all along. Um, diffusion can occur across the whole gill plate or you can say there is a constant diffusion gradient maintained across the whole gill plate. Okay. Um, okay, so that uh, that really is the end of this video. Um, I hope it's helped. Um, there are other questions on um, uh, gas exchange in the fish, uh, but I think we've done a, a pretty good selection of questions uh, in this video.